So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for facilitating uh, here for, for giving the facility of presenting the work. My talk today is divided into two parts. In the first part, I will discuss the relation that exists between the access theories and parameterization, where, as we will see, the access theories are a particular class of four dimensional inquiries to the series, while parameterization. procedure generates a class of four-dimensional network two theories, which are known as classes theories. And the particular four-dimensional theory we get depends on the Riemann surface used for the multiplication, and depends also on the six-dimensional theory we started from. For my talk, I will focus on the theory of type theory. Classes theories are naturally associated with patient systems in the following way. space of teaching system is just the modular space of solutions to these equations which are known as teaching equations, modular reaction of the H group, together with appropriate boundary conditions for the fields actually in equation. The boundary conditions act as the punctures of the new surface. For any time in Z in the complex coordinates Some more on the structure of the feature of this space. This is a hybrid header space, which means that it has many complex structures characterized by this thing. Let's see that if I can zero the feature of the space reduces to the nuclear space of Higgs man, which is just a pair that by itself such that the expression is satisfied. This is important in this theory because the nuclear space of the Higgs bundle can be shown to be equivalent of the torus vibration. is it would be 
important to consider the so-called focal limit or conformal limit in which we send the radius r to zero, zeta to zero, while keeping this ratio constant. This way, this part connection, which is in general, which in general depends on the z and the r, only depends on the z coordinate. We have a homomorphic condition. And it is from this focal connection that algebraic equations can be constructed, which is I'm going to show you next. So what are Panade equations? Panade equations arise in the classification of second order, nonlinear ordinary differential equations of degree one of this form, where this function f is rationally including g dot, g dot means derivative with respect to time, and meromorphic with time. Moreover, it, it has to satisfy the final left property. Final left property means that the solution q of this system of this equation has I have branch points or essential similarity only at the positions determined by the equation, while, not by the equation itself, while the position of the poles for the solution can depend on the initial data. So branch points and essential similarity cannot depend on the integration constants or initial data, but poles can. These possible equations have been classified by Panabet himself 100 years ago. It turns out that there are just six possible such equations, which are known as one, two, three, four, five, and six, which can also depend on some number of parameters. For example, this is the equation for one, and this is the equation for second, which is the equation for one. Now, later developments in the theory of one of them led to a refinement of this classification and led to introduce other equations, which are not really new equations, but they are spe specialization to repeat this equation. So for example, parametric two and parametric three are coincide with parametric one when you specialize this handful with additional SL numbers. Again, these equations are not related, but they can all be derived from parametric six by taking the appropriate scaling of the parameters and the variables in our equation. And we get again this complex diagram, which is the same as the complex diagram in your parametric so arising from our classes theory. So this is the first indication that classes theories and Faraday equations can have something in common. To understand better this situation, I have to tell you how Faraday equations can be constructed. There are mainly two ways. The first, the easiest way is to think of the Faraday equations as the equation of motion for some classical Hamiltonian system with the Hamiltonian by the equation that we need to find the h, which depends on the position variable q and the time variable p and time, such that this equation of motion generates the Faraday equation. Now, since the Hamilton is time dependent, we can study its time constraint. In the theory of the event, the Hamilton is known as sigma function, and the equation satisfied by the sigma function is known as sigma by the equation. For our purposes, it will be more important to consider instead the tau function, which is again the sigma function in this way. Also, the tau function will satisfy a differential equation, which is known as tau parity equation. The second way to construct parity equations is by considering isomodromic deformations of systems B of first order linear or D, ordinary the problem we consider is the two by two system of linear ordinary differential equations of this type. So that this set is again a complex coordinate on a functional sphere. The metric A is a two by two basic matrix, and the solution psi of this system is a two by two metric coordinate. Again, the metric A can have poles at the position of the punctures, and again, as we saw in the Hitchin system, we can have regular or irregular singularity. Now, if the pole is simple, we have a regular singularity, which means that the solution is psi as a branch point at the puncture. So when I move my solution around this puncture, I will get some monotony, which is encoded in the monotony matrix. Similarly, if the singularity is irregular, the solution of psi will have an essential singularity at the puncture, which means that Stokes phenomena can occur. So this implies that the asymptotic expansion of my solution 
around with essential similarity can depend on the direction and the approach in the similarity around. And the different expansions will be related by matrices, which are known as the slopes matrices. Now, how do Cartesian equations arise in this set? The point is that if I give you the matrix A, then the slopes matrices and monotony matrices of the solution psi are the real numbers. But the converse is not true. The linear monotony matrices and slopes matrices then there could be a main parameter family for matrices A, depending on parameters A, associated to the same data. So one is naturally led to consider the problem of isomonotomic deformations of the matrix A, which are deformations P of A, which preserve monotomy and Stokes matrices of the solution. To give an example, the easiest way is the puncture in a sphere with four vector punctures. We can always put Correspondence can be made more precise, made more details in the paper, but then again, you can construct a dictionary between isomonomic problems as well as the equations, and it can see some associated to n by the two plus s. In particular, analytic time will correspond to the gauge coupling, the analytic function Hamiltonian will correspond to the long direction parameter, while the three parameters in the analytic equation. What is actually more important is that most of the tau function, which was arising in the Faraday story, has an interpretation of gauge theory, and it is interpreted as the slope <coughs> toward the class of partition function. Why is that so? In order to understand this, I have to tell you how algebraic tau functions are arising <coughs> in conformality theory. Let's start from the simplest case of endless six. So we have a prima sphere with polynomial. <coughs> it has been shown by the Kyoto group in the 80s that the solution of the system of linear coordinate differentiations associated with the level 6 of this system can be expressed in terms of this correlator in a conformative theory referring to a central charge C equal to 1, where this field psi are the charging fields and the this field and in this field O is at the So why is this a solution to this system of linear coordinate distributions? The point is that if I send you the form, I give you A, I give you the monogamy matrices for the, the solution psi, which basically determines the solution of psi. So if I'm able to construct operators O such that all of the fields in EOP have this monogamy, then it is a solution by construction. The problem is that I have to show you that this twist fields O with such properties exist. And this is what has been done by the Kyoto group. It basically shows 
If no, uh, this will conclude the first part of the afternoon session. So.